Hey everybody, Patty Ann here. Today I'm going to show you how to take an image from Creative Fabrica and add your puppy dog to it. I'll show how to do it with sublimation for a mug and without sublimation for a t-shirt. So follow me to my desk and let's get started. Okay, first I'm going to show you where I got the image. Don't be put off by this. You can get the image anywhere you're able to on the internet. But rather than me spending my time looking for images, I like to use Creative Fabrica all the time because I have a monthly subscription. So I'm not going to know how much this particular item will cost you. Since I have a subscription, it doesn't show up for me. But again, Get your images anywhere you want to. I'll show you right now though. I will have a link down below for Creative Fabrica. It is on sale right now for $12 per month and it's a $29 value usually per month. Keep checking this, it goes up and down, but right now it's $12 a month. So once you're in Creative Fabrica like this, I would select right up here, I'm gonna type, I selected actually graphics first and then I came up here and I typed in peace, love, and I think it was peace, love, and fall maybe. Let's see, peace, love, and fall. This looks like it might be it. Can't tell by the little tiny images. I'll look at this one and see if this is the one. Okay, no, I don't really like that one as much, so let me go back. Peace, love, fall. Okay, I'm not crazy about that one either, so peace, love, fall. Maybe it was this one. Okay, it wasn't that one, but you'll see which one it is that I got, and you can check through these. Maybe you'll like one of these better. The fun thing to do is click down here, and you can see how these people have used some of these images when you go to Creative Fabrica. But anyway, let's just go on over to my silhouette and get started. So if your silhouette, when you open it up, is ever like this, and you don't see the stuff you have on it, something that I've noticed is if I just click on this selection lasso tool, makes my stuff come up and then I can click back up here. So this is the one I did and I really like it a lot. So you can look for it over there. Here's the thing that I ended up with and here is the dog that I'm using. The Westie. As I said, my sister has and has had Westies. So the first thing I'm going to do with this little Westie, guys, I'm going to remove the background from him. So to do that, just come over here to the my Google Drive and I'm going to go to remove.bg. That opens this up right here, remove.bg. I'll upload an image, and I'm going to browse for the one. Now, these are all my sister's dogs, stuff that I've been playing with. And where did I put her little Westie? Okay, Westie puppy, open. And so here it is, and there, how cute is that that it turns out? Now, all you have to do is download it. You can download a full size resolution one if you feel like you need to and you want to purchase that. I think it's for purchase. I'm just going to say download and notice it comes right down here in my Windows 10. Okay, then I'll go back to Silhouette. Let's get, well, I don't have to get rid of this one yet, but what I would do is go to File and Merge and I'll merge in that one that was just cropped out the background. Perfect. Okay. So there it is, right there. So now I can get rid of this one. I no longer need it. And this is what I started with, with my one that I got from Creative Fabrica. If you want to see it, I'll go to File, Merge. This one that I, that I got was called Peace, Love, Fall, Sublimation, dash PNG. Okay, if you want to note that number, you can do that in case you want to get the exact one that I'm using. Peace, love, fall, sublimation, dash PNG. Of course, you don't have to use it for sublimation. Like I said, you can print it on that printable paper slash vinylish HTV kind of stuff and put it on a shirt like that. And depending on whether you're using a, um, 
a white shirt or a dark shirt, you can choose which of the two options that I'll show you down below in the links that you can use. Okay, so that's what I use and I just opened it right here like this. Now, I wanna go back one more time and show you something. Okay, we're back here and this particular image, if I hover it over it, you can see, you should be able to see, Oh, I'm not in the, yes I am. There we go, <laughs> finally. When you hover it over it, it says it's a PNG image. Usually if it's a PNG image, you have to trace it first before you can use it. But in this case, when I come back over here to my uh, Silhouette software, and let's move this down, let's get this out. Group this together. I'll just bring in another one to show you. I would go to File, Merge, and get that PNG and double click on it. It brings it in. Usually, as I said, you have to trace these. At least that's what I've been finding. But on this particular one, if I just click on it, right click on it and say Release Compound Path, I'm able to release the compound path just like this and move things around, which is exactly what I want to do because I don't want this butterfly and those little pieces in there. And the other thing I want to change on this pumpkin is I want to get rid of this um, vine right here because if I don't, when I bring little Kaylee over here, it gets in her face and I don't like it to be on her face. So I'm just going to scroll way in on this so I can see I'm going to get the knife and come in here and cut this out just like that. Okay, and it's, whoopsie, and it's free. Well, let's see what's going on here. Cut this out just like that. Okay. So I've scrolled way in, I've gotten the knife tool, and I'm just going to make a cut here. I need to make sure that I go from the white backing to the white backing, or it won't work right. So I've got to start right here and just go straight across, making sure I get out. And then that can be removed. Let me show you the difference. If I don't do it like that, and I think I'm starting in the white area with the knife, but I'm not quite at the edge and I draw across, it's still going to cut, but, whoops, that one. It's, it's still going to cut, but watch. It's not going to let me take it apart because there's a little connection right there. So again, what you want to make sure that you do is get your knife tool and make sure you go from the blank area where there's nothing all the way through to the other piece, side. It's almost like if you were cutting a piece of toast. If you started inside the crust and went over to the other edge on the outside and thought you had cut it totally in half, you wouldn't have because it was still connected. Hopefully that made a little sense. So I would just delete that thing now and just scroll back in. Here's my little Kaylee girl uh, who's ready to roll. I could just put her right here. And I could, you know, manipulate her however I'd like to. And I could even change the text if I wanted to, to have it come across all the way. But I pretty much like how this look looks. So I'm going to hit group. And then I'm going to show you down here on my tabletop how I measured my mug. Remember, I'm new at this. Y'all might have a better way to do it or another way to do it. But this is what I found worked for me today. Okay, I got a bunch of these mugs today. Uh, I think there's, what, 12 in each box, and I've got several boxes. I really like how they're working. As I said, I'm new. I'll put the link for these down below so you can see them. Be sure when you're at the uh, website that I do list below that you grab the extra $10 off coupon. It should still be there, hopefully. This is uh, the beginning of September 2020, and it's there. Here's one of the mugs, and this is the one that I had done. And what I did was, uh, since I'm just putting it on the front of the mug, I just went ahead and measured to see about 
how big I wanted the thing to be. And I thought according to this, I didn't want it to be any wider than four inches and no taller than like two and a half or three. So let's go back now to Silhouette and see how I put that into practice. Okay, as you can probably see, when I select this whole thing that I've grouped together, I can come up here and I can see that the width of it is t almost 11 inches, which I said I didn't want it to be any bigger than three or four. I say four. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lock this lock and I'm gonna go ahead and squish this thing down, or I could just change this to a four and see what happens to the other amount, and it's almost two inches. So that's pretty much perfect like that. I like it like that. Um, I accidentally have her foot going underneath the word fall. Does that bother me? Yes or no? Let's see. Yeah, I don't think I really care for it like that. So I'm going to ungroup this and move her out of the way. And I'm going to grab these words and group these back together. Group. And I might just stretch them out a little bit too. So to do that, I've got to scroll in some so I can see that middle box. I can scroll it, stretch it out like that. And um, let's see, move this over, whoops. Leave that alone. Now there's several layers that make that up. You can see I was just moving something and not the whole thing. I want to leave that like that. Bring this over get rid of that little spot that's from somewhere and bring Kaylee down here behind okay she's trying to get her situated you know sometimes you just can't decide what you like it's nutty and I think I just did that wrong again because I didn't get it all moving. So I think I'll just leave well enough alone and just leave it like this. So let me group all of this together now. Group. And let's see, what is the size? Well, it's four inches wide, which is perfect, and a little over two inches tall, which is great also. So I'm going to go ahead and move this over onto my mat. And I can actually just come up here when I have it selected and come here where it says center to page and it put it right on the center of the page that I'm working on. So that is the one that I can use for my um, sublimation. I'm going to duplicate this one by holding alt down on my keyboard and dragging one off. So this one right here for sublimation, I don't really need to cut this on my machine. If I was cutting it on my machine, what I would probably do is put a box behind it, right click and send it to the back, and I would change the color of that box to white so that my machine would have this to cut around. Otherwise, let's see what would happen if we had no box and we went over here and what said send. So it's going to cut all of that out or I can say cut edge, but it's still going to cut the edge of that stuff, which I don't really want it to do. I don't want that. So again, if I bring this box behind it and I simply change the color by clicking on it of the box to white, making sure it's white because my printer won't print that. And then I say send, and now I can grab all this and say cut the edge, and the only thing it's going to cut is the edge of my box. So that's what I would like for that. So I can just group that together now. Okay, now that's for my sublimation one. And of course for sublimation I am going to right click on this and say flip horizontally. I need to make sure that I mirror it before I put it on my sub print it on my sublimation paper with my sublimation ink. Now this one on the other hand, let's say we're using this one and we're going to make it larger because it's going to go on a shirt and I'm going to use that 
uh, paper that I have that I showed you the other day that I use for light colored shirts. I'm just going to show the light colored one again today. I will in the uh, soon be showing you some dark color ones. This will be light, so I'm going to right click on this one. Uh oh, delete. Hey, undo. <laughs> I'm not sure where that came from. I don't want that. Delete. So I'm going to right click on this and say uh, flip horizontally also because this is for a print then cut on my white colored t-shirt. Now there's several things that I could do for this. I could make a box around it and cut this on my cutting machine or after this is done printing, I could just cut it with a pair of scissors. I don't have to have a cutting machine to do this stuff. So those of you who don't have cutting machines, no problem. You can use this software to design and just cut it with scissors. So let's see, maybe I would want to make, well, I would like to use my paper that I have to its fullest. So I could go ahead and hit Alt and click on here and put another one here. And let's see, can I fit three? Probably not. So I could put two on my paper if I wanted to, and then put these, iron these onto t-shirts. So these would be ready to go. So let's do the sublimation one first. I'm gonna move these off. Gonna bring this one over. And since I'm not gonna do a print then cut, I can just actually, I have my page set up, look, to letter size, and I'm using my portrait, but I'm really not gonna use any machine because I'm just gonna print this and then cut around these with scissors. So I could put a whole bunch of these on a page and really get my money's worth out of this sheet of um, sublimation paper. Right, I could do a bunch of these like this. And I don't know, you know, I could do that. Let's see, let me think for just a minute. I'm trying to decide if I really want to do this or I might meet you back here in a few minutes and change a few of these so they don't have Westies, but they have other dogs instead. So hang on, I'll be right back. Okay, I figured out a few more things to do. Here you can see that I have Kaylee and she has on her looks like uh, patriotic attire. So I found this um, image right here on Creative Fabrica and I just decided to use that. And then over on this one, you can see I added Kaylee to it. Now, I'm not gonna print all of these things off, I've decided, because I don't really want to because I've already done a Kaylee one for my sister. So what I also found that I'm going to do for your sample is I, a long time ago, made these into shirts. I was practicing with um, silk screening and I was using vinyl. This is a place that we like to go to a local place and we like to hang out here to eat dinner, to watch local bands play and that kind of stuff. So the place has been struggling since uh, the pandemic. So I thought maybe what I could do is make some of these mugs with this that they could sell there and maybe get a little extra money. I don't know, I'm thinking about it. But anyway, I think I'll make a couple of these. So I'm gonna go ahead and print these out and on my sublimation printer, Make sure I put my sublimation paper in with the blue side facing up, the kind I use, so it prints on the white side. And once it's printed, I'll come back over here. But I did want to show you with my settings, I go to File, Print, and again, I wouldn't have to send this to a machine at all. And I would just say Print right here again. My Preferences window comes up. I have two different printers that I use. The HP Envy is the one I use for my print and cut regular, my Epson is the one I used for um, sublimation. So I would click on that and say preferences. And I've actually made a preference here for sublimation. So I don't have to mess with it every time I do sublimation. I just click on that and it changes all my settings to what I want. So let me print this and I'll be back. 
Okay, I already printed out and made those two mugs yesterday in the middle of this tutorial because I was so excited to try it that I forgot to videotape how I did it in my machine for the sublimation part. So in the meantime, if you look up at my screen, you'll see a big old bass that my son caught. He loves to fish, so I thought I'd make him a mug with his bass on it. So I printed out two of them here, although this one looks like it may have been cut off a little bit. And then a friend of mine does long arm quilting. If you're a quilter, you know what that is. Her business is called Little Bird Quilting, and uh, I told her she should put her business cards in our local quilt shop in a mug with her name on it just to draw attention to it. So I'm going to make this one for her. Now maybe you notice something I've done wrong. I've already printed this out. Look what I did. Learn from me. I forgot to mirror it so this one's worthless. So I'm going to cut it off. It's worthless. So this is why you don't really need a cutting machine to do this if you're doing sublimation or if you're even doing the squares on the shirts. Because all you need is a ruler maybe and an X-Acto knife or scissors and just cut these apart. I like to try to make them really straight so that I'm careful when I put them on my mugs. Okay, this is the one I'll go twice I have a self-healing mat on my desk here, so that's perfect. This is the one I can't use though, although I could still cut this off and use her little bird, so I'll do that. I'll save that for the little bird. So now for this part, I'm going to just line up my ruler again, and again, this is why you can get the free software and print right from Silhouette, and you don't even have to have a machine. Now I do like to cut around some things because I think it looks really nice when you do that but these don't need to be cut around so I think I hope I hope I made this the right size and it looks like I did so I put the bird here I guess and go around like this and make that be even Steven to the edge as best I can. Could have probably made it a little bit wider. That's okay though. All right, and then this one for the fish, I made two of them just in case I messed up something. So, in the meantime, I have my heat press over there heating up so it will be ready to roll. Okay, there's that, and I'll use this one. I guess they're both exactly the same, should be. I think this would make a really sweet gift. You know, you can really personalize these things. So for Christmas and birthdays and that kind of stuff. Now this, of course, since I'm doing it on my mug, is only for sublimation. But I could do this same thing that I'm doing here. And I'll show you how you do it on the um, printable paper or the printable vinyl for a shirt. And you don't have to have sublimation ink. You can use inkjet ink. And of course, if you buy the right papers, you can use, what's it called? Laser jet. So these are ready to go. So what I'll do now is I will take this, and I like it to be, I'm right-handed, so I don't want my image here. I'd rather it be so people can see it when I'm drinking. So I'll put the image of Aaron's fish here, and I'll tape it on with the tape, and then I'll do Rachel's little bird quilting on another mug. So join me over there and I'll show you. Okay, as hopefully you can see, I have my heat press set up at 385 degrees for 190 seconds. Let me move that back over. And what I've actually got heating up is my, you know, I bought that four in one deal back in the day. Uh, I never used it until I started with this sublimation. But this is where my mug will go in right here. And I'll show you. I've already gone ahead. All right. So I've already taken the mug with Aaron's fish on it. And I've taped it on with this heat safe tape. The images down onto the mug. Then I go ahead and take the mug 
and just put it in here, trying to make sure that the handle is straight up. And then I just close this up like that. Good firm pressure. And once that closed, I start my timer. And when the timer's done, I'll open it up and show you what's next. Okay, there are about 35 seconds left. When the buzzer rings, of course, I will turn it off and then just open this heat press up. The mug's gonna be very, very hot. The handle, not so bad. So I'm just gonna use this jacket that I have handy here as a pot holder to pick it up. I really should get a real pot holder from upstairs, but I haven't done that yet. So let's see, we have nine seconds. All right, it's time to open this up. And I'll take out the mug. I'll push this back out of the way. I don't know if you can see, but this mug is actually smoking hot. And now I'm going to very carefully peel off the tape. As long as I don't touch the mug too much, I'm fine. And look how beautifully that turned out. I think it's really nice. So I don't want to touch the mug, obviously, because it's really, really hot. So I'm going to place the mug here on this shirt and move it over to the other side of the table to let it cool. And then I will now do Rachel's. Okay, there's about 35 seconds left for Rachel's mug. I put it on her design on the same way I did Aaron's with that heat resistant tape. It's going for 190 seconds at 385 degrees. I did remember I had a pot holder over on the other side of the room because I was going to put some HTV or something on here to make a present. So I guess I'll just use it for myself. All right, timer's going to ring means it's time to open this. Take the mug out. Push that back. I can actually turn that off now. And you may or may not be able to see that it is smoking hot. So let's cross our fingers and hope this worked out well. It worked out really well except for the bottom. So I'm not sure if I don't have it close enough Let's see. I'm not sure if I have it in far enough. See how the bottom's a little bit funny? But not bad, right? Not bad at all. I'm pretty impressed. <laughs> so, all right, Rachel, I hope you like it. Pretty cool. So I'll let this one cool and the other one cool. Okay, for Aaron's mug, I did end up redoing it because the image that I had that I grabbed off of Facebook was not a very high resolution image and it really made a crappy cup, <laughs> to be honest with you. So I made it again and this time I did get the original image with the fish in a high resolution and it came out much clearer. I did go to remove bg.com to remove the background and then I added behind it a nice cloud pattern. So I think it turned out a lot better than the original one did because of the resolution of the image. Okay, I'm switching gears here because I said I would show you again how to use the printable paper, which I think is more like HTV, that you can use to put on garments if you don't feel like putting vinyl on and you want something that's softer, softer and more natural feeling. I'm putting this on a light green t-shirt um, because and I am using the light transfer stuff. <laughs> so I'll show you what that is at the end. But what I've done was I have this, which I have made before, and I've actually done this, this with uh, silk screening and with vinyl, but this time I'm going to do it, as I said, this way. Uh, I've already mirrored it because I need to mirror it for this. So I've got to print it on that special paper. So I'm going to go to File and Print. 
This time I'm not going to be using my sublimation printer, my Epson. I'm going to be using my HP Envy machine. Okay, I am going to go to Preferences. And I'm going to leave all this stuff alone except for I don't want my print quality to be normal. I want it to be best. And let's see. I think that's all that I changed now. So I'm going to say OK. And I'm going to print it. So is that big enough? Yeah. All right, that'll be printing out, and then I will go over and set up my heat press, and again, show you how to press this on. But you know, one thing I forgot, what I usually do do, is put an offset around these things so that it's not, um, the square part isn't showing up. Although it shouldn't, since it's white, it's not gonna be printing. But let me show you when it's done printing, how I could just use my scissors if I'm not going to use my Cricut, or my Cameo, or my portrait. So hang on, I'll be right back. Okay, that's the good thing about using uh, um, the Silhouette software or the Studio software, we could just call it, for doing these kind of projects because you can just use your scissors and cut around here. You don't even have to have a, a cutting machine, but you could uh, design in this software and just print it from the software and then put it on your shirt or whatever object it is you're working on. I have to be careful because the ink may be a little bit damp. The directions for this particular product tell you to dry this for about 10 seconds under your heat press, not closing your press on it, just letting it hover above that. So let's go over to my machine and I'll show you that. Okay, as I mentioned, I'm going to put this on here right side up and just hover my heat press over it for like 10 seconds just to make sure there's extra moisture in the ink that it's dried. It's been about 10 seconds. So I'll just move it off of here like this now. And then the next thing I'm going to do is just come over here and put this pad in. I've told you before that I like to use these pads because there's seams right here and that's gonna mess up how this is gonna work if I don't put it in there. So I'm going to go ahead and put this in here like this, just like so, and make sure that this is pretty even, and it looks terrific. So now I have my heat press, as you can see, set up for 375 degrees for 30 seconds. So I'm going to place this on here, and... I'm going to place a cover sheet over top, and I'm just going to actually use a piece of paper for that, for my cover sheet. So then I'm going to do this for 30 seconds, 375 degrees. Oh gosh, I forgot. I've got to loosen this now because I do have that pad in there. So the pressure is way too tight. I hope I didn't just mess it up. There we go. Now it might be too loose. You know, it, it's a good idea to test things before you go ahead and start pressing. So this only has 18 seconds left and I can show you what we need to do next. When this is done, one of the reasons I especially like this material that I'm using, and by the way, the stuff that I'm using is Jet Pro SS. It really makes a nice soft finish on your product. There it is. And this swing it away. Hopefully it turned out okay. My paper came up. That's fine. Uh, I'm going to peel this. And once it's peeled and it's still warm, you're supposed to go ahead and stretch it a little bit because that helps to make it softer and work really well. So there it is. And this, I just love this stuff. Okay, I just thought I'd show you once again some of the things that I made in this tutorial. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope that you like this tutorial and you give me a thumbs up and subscribe. Hit the bell. Uh, check out my links down below. Join us on Facebook. We have several Facebook groups. I'd love to have you join me there. 
Patreon class, I'll have one, and actually there's one this Sunday, live at 1 p.m. Eastern Time. My classes are once a month, and they're, it's only $5, and I teach you more and more about using Silhouette Business Edition for whatever machine you might have. So again, thanks for joining me, guys. See you again soon. Bye-bye.